What purpose? For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in opposition to the motion. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. The gentleman is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. First, I'm just very pleased that our friends on the other side of the aisle actually found somebody to offer the MTR since they were apparently here today. We're having trouble finding speakers to come to the floor and defend what is probably the most powerful and least accountable government agency uh, in the history of the Republic. And it would be difficult. It would be dif difficult to defend this agency, but let me defend first, uh, dispense with the motion to recommit. Uh, number one, as we read this, uh, Dodd-Frank did not grant the CFPB uh, power over data breaches. Uh, so this part of the MTR uh, is irrelevant. The other portions are redundant. But, Mr. Speaker, the more important point is how can anybody come to the floor to defend an agency that is collecting such massive quantities of data? I find it somewhat ironic that the MTR seemingly is concerned about data breaches to a government agency that is collecting 53 million data on 53 million borrowers who took out mortgages since 1998, the person in charge of the project has testified that it is easy to reverse engineer the identities of 95% of these records. The CFPB in their credit card database is collecting at least uh, data on 991 million credit cards held by roughly 60% of the adult U.S. population, where's the angst and the anxiety and the concern for the possible data breaches of CFPB? How about their consumer credit panel where they're collecting a database of credit reports on 8.6 million Americans? I mean, it used to be a contest between CFPB and NSA who can collect the most data on American citizens. And yet... Stay tuned on who wins that competition. And then, Mr. Speaker, we have an agency that, notwithstanding its benign yet Orwellian title, is abusing consumer rights. We've already had the QM rule, Qualified Mortgage Rule, promulgated, where the Federal Reserve says one-third of black and Hispanic homeowners could no longer qualify for their mortgages. Where's the outrage there? CoreLogic, which is a firm that collects data in our mortgage market, has said when fully implemented, this rule of this agency that's supposed to protect our consumers, half, half of the mortgages would no longer qualify. So no wonder Democrats were having trouble finding speakers to defend this. And then last but not least, an agency that has no accountability, that sets its own budget, notwithstanding the testimony of the head of the agency who said that he was not building a palace, yet they take $145 million of hard-earned taxpayer money to renovate a $150 million building they don't even own. On a square foot basis, Mr. Speaker, this is three times the average Class A luxury renovation space in Washington, D.C. On a square foot basis, it costs more for the CFPB to have their headquarters than it costs to build the Trump World Tower. On a square foot basis, it costs more to renovate their headquarters than it does to build the Bellagio Hotel and I'm the single largest, the single most expensive hotel in America. Mr. Speaker, on a square foot basis, it costs more than the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, the single tallest building in the world in their similarities, because the CFPB spent $7 million on the same world-renowned architectural firm to, decide, to design their building. Mr. Speaker... 
again, this is one of the most powerful and least accountable agencies in the history of the Republic. True consumer protection is about competitive, innovative, transparent markets that respect the dignity and the liberty of every American citizen to buy the mortgage, to get the credit card that they want that's best for them and their families. Let's respect them. Let's hold accountable government. Let's dispense with the motion to recommit and let's vote aye on the Consumer Financial Freedom and Washington Accountability Act.